Ladies and gents, welcome to Setup Wars Boomer Edition. My favorite edition of Setup Wars, believe it or not, where all the contestants are age 35 or older. I know that's not the exact age group of boomers, but just go with it, okay? The point of the episode is to show off setups from my older audience that want to participate. So with that said, sit back and relax, grab your cigars, and let the Setup Wars begin. Imagine being able to resolve any IT related issue with a single tap on your screen. Well, no need to imagine. Meet Pulseway, the IT management platform right in your pocket. You can monitor your systems and get instant alerts in real time, download and install updates, backup files, and even power off your PC. Automating tasks is one of the handiest features saving you valuable time all from the comfort of your mobile device. So go ahead and start your free trial at Pulseway by clicking my link down below. We are kicking off the show with our setup spotlight of the episode. He goes by Cloud64 and he asked us to keep his age hidden for privacy reasons, which I will honor, of course. So Cloud is an SMG4 machinima artist slash editor at Glitch Productions, and it took him only three days to build a setup for video editing, animation, and graphic design. I can't help but feel like he shot himself in the foot with the desk choice. Everything looks so cramped on that tiny Sal John countertop. Not only does the Alex add-on unit take up a necessary space on the desk, but he has to move the peripherals every time he needs to open the drawers. Nothing about this layout seems optimal, and it's bizarre because he clearly has a space for a much larger desk. 74 inches just isn't big enough. Okay, you can ask my wife. Huh? You should have gone with a nine. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lame joke. <laughs> You should have gone with a 98 inch countertop instead. Ikea does sell those as well. The monitor layout, however, is awesome. I have no complaints with that. This is the best way to do a triple monitor setup with the primary being a 49 inch super ultrawide. The only thing I would have done differently was go with a larger desk and replace the Alex add-on unit with an actual monitorizer like this one from Amazon. This clamps to the desk, freeing up extra space underneath it so you can store your audio interface and PlayStation 4, but it's also not as deep as the add-on unit, so you get more space for your keyboard and mouse pad as well. Another thing I would recommend is a laptop desk mount if you're always using a laptop. This will give you an easier reach and you can always tuck it away when you're not using it. Of course, a small pencil drawer under your desk would also help you keep your surface neat and tidy. You can store your Tesla car key, your Apple Watch when you're not using it, and other smaller items. It's a staple of every setup at this point, and if you still don't have one, I'll leave a link below to one I recommend picking up. The PC powering it all is a custom build featuring the 12700KF and the MSI RTX 3080 Ventus with an odd fan configuration seems like the entire build has intake fans and no exhaust. I would flip the top two and the rear fan so it could help exhaust some of the hot air out and maybe even some cheap cable extensions to help clean up the insides but other than that it's not a bad build. Although cable management is pretty much under control, I would suggest maybe personalizing the setup a little bit. It's looking way too serious. Make it stand out from the rest. Make it yours. Thanks for entering. We haven't seen a left-handed user in a while on Setup Wars. Breaking the streak is Dan, who's a card and game store manager from Philly. He spent one year to build this setup for mostly gaming and a bit of work, but there is a truly inspiring story behind it all that I would love to share with everyone at the end. So the desk is made up of a custom butcher block and Alex drawer combo with a DIY modesty panel in the back to help hide all the cables. I love the monitor combo here. He's using a smaller 15 inch portable display as a supplement to his larger 49 inch primary ultraride. I know you guys heard me talk about this a million times before, but this is like the perfect visual example of what I mean. This is the ideal ratio of screen to monitor size. You got the primary up top for gaming or doing all of your productivity, and the smaller display is for multitasking or reference material. 
The desk surface is kept very clean and minimal. We just got the essentials like his peripherals, a pair of speakers, and the Elgato Stream Deck, which he uses to control all the Gobi lights in his room, like the backlighting he added behind the posters above. But here's where the setup gets exciting. The cable management. I know. At first, I thought this was a laptop-powered setup. I thought the smaller monitor on the bottom was a laptop because I didn't see a desktop PC anywhere. But the actual PC that powers the setup and the TV is sitting inside a shelf to the left side. It's almost mind-blowing how we did this because I don't see any cables or visible raceways that run across the wall. So how the hell did he do this? No joke, it took me like 10 minutes of zooming in on the photos to finally realize that he used a small corner raceway on the bottom of the baseboard to run the HDMI cables across the floor. That is big brain. He even painted the raceway the same color as the wall so it doesn't stick out. I mean, the attention to detail is there. As cool as the main gaming setup is, I love what he did with the rest of the room. He transformed his closet into a sitting area where he can kick back and play on the big screen. And right next to that, he's got some shelves displaying some of his all-time favorite games. And my personal favorite, the trophies from his past esports competitions. I mean, those look like checks to me. Man's getting paid for being good at video games. Must be nice. I know a flawless setup when I see one, but what really solidifies this as a submission that I won't ever forget is the story behind it all. You see, Dan unfortunately lost his dad to a rare form of cancer back in 2015. So he helped his mom remodel parts of her house to help her cope and have the house feeling different. Well, sadly, in April of 2022, he lost his mom to COVID. Being an only child, he ended up inheriting everything and uh, found himself moving back into his childhood home, which he currently lives in. There was a guest room upstairs that was being used for storage, so he decided to clean it up and turn it into his office. I bring up the story because the entire process of transforming the room into his office that you see here now was like therapy for Dan. You know, he stated that finding the channel and going hard on the setup transformation was what really helped him through the first year of not having his parents around. Dan, if you're watching, I'm truly sorry for your loss, man. Life sucks. Uh, the death of loved ones is something we unfortunately experience at one point in time. But in the midst of all that, I am glad that Setup Wars gave you that distraction uh, to create such an awesome space. And just like you said in the notes, I know without a doubt, your parents will be blown away by what you have accomplished here. And guess what? They'll be extra proud to know that you are taking home the 60 second seal of approval. So if you're watching this video, toss a message on Discord to claim your plaque, as well as your free tech source mouse pad. Phenomenal job on this setup. Finally, someone who knows how to do an inverted PC build. This is Evan's dual ultralight setup from Cali. He's an IT system admin that spent a good three years upgrading this setup so that he can work from home, but also game on his spare time. He's really into drifting, which is what the sim racing setup on the side is used for, completely decked out with Fanatec racing gear. The main setup, however, is what got my juices flowing in the first place. He custom built the desk himself using a slab from a liquid amber tree from his backyard and the legs have been fabricated from square tubes. It came out looking really good actually. The light wood complements the darker accents nicely. We got stacked ultrawides for both displays and underneath that is the Corsair K95 keyboard paired with a Razer Naga Ultimate. However, the grommet for the desk is in a weird spot. I would have just ran the cables across the desk instead. Not only would it be closer to the PC, but also you wouldn't have to drill a hole in that awesome desk. That hole serves no other purpose other than to route that keyboard cable, so it just seems unnecessary to me. For audio, Evan is rocking a pair of Mackie speakers for the primary source, and for the secondaries, he's got a nice selection between the Philips Fidelios and the Ultra Sone Pros. I just love how clean he kept the surface of the desk. He moved the entire DAC and amp stack under his desk with what appears to be a mount of some sort. I'm not sure if he made this himself or if it was purchased online. I know that you can practically find custom stuff on Etsy, so that is a possibility. Aside from that loose cable from the headphones, the rest of the cables have been managed beautifully thanks to a few cable racks. Also bonus points on that undermount for the UPS. Much better than just leaving it on the floor. 
Another thing that got my juices flowing is that Epic PC, a custom hardline build featuring the Ryzen 9 5900X and the AMD RX 6900 XT in a fully inverted O11 dynamic case. This man has the best of both worlds and two equally badass setups. Thank you, Evan, for coming on the show. What a pleasant surprise this was. I just got done reacting to this very same setup on the last Reddit video to only come across the actual submission on Setup Wars. Like, what are the chances of this? I'm actually really glad that Jay put in a submission because this setup caught my attention quite a bit. To start off, he is also an IT support specialist, but from Malaysia. And it took him two years to get this set up to this point for gaming and working from home. What is it with IT guys and baller setups? They must be paying you guys really good apparently. Some of the things that caught my attention was the perfect balance of function and form. Everything about this setup just flows from the katana mounted on the pegboard to the beautiful subtle wood accents. So he's running triple displays with an ultrawright as the primary and two other smaller displays for multitasking. I just love the wood skin bezel on the vertical monitor. That's something I haven't seen before. It actually looks like he skinned the custom speaker stands and the monitor riser as well for consistency. This is actually pretty creative. If you look at the speakers from an angle, we can see that the stand was made out of some rustic pipes and a shelf, while the riser was made out of some furniture legs and a slab of wood. For peripherals, he's rocking an ROG Flare 2 keyboard paired with an ROG Keras mouse with an ROG mouse pad. I gotta respect the loyalty to the ROG ecosystem here. Aside from the speakers, he's also got two pairs of ROG headsets that he swaps to for gaming. The go-tos are the Delta S wireless that he keeps underneath one of the speakers, and the other Deltas are kept underneath the desk, which I'm assuming are backup. The cable management looks like it's nicely contained. He installed a massive rack that helps route all the cables into the back of the custom PC that's powering the main setup. We got a 12700F paired with an ROG Strix 3070 Ti. The secondary setup is powered by his Xbox Series S. Now this is where he kicks back to play some console games and watch content on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Really great work and attention to detail on this awesome setup. Thank you, Jay, for finally coming on the show. Wrapping up the video is a badass corner desk TIE fighter set up by Michael, who's an automotive restyling manager and installer from Colorado. Just like the most of us watching this episode, he too wanted a space to call his own. So he spent a good part of a year building out a man cave, his own little getaway, as he likes to call it. The massive corner desk was made out of two giant doors that he connected together with some Alex units underneath for support. We got a 32-inch Odyssey G7 as the primary, sandwiched by two other G3 monitors for that TIE fighter look, which coincidentally fits the whole Star Wars theme of the room nicely. For peripherals, it's pretty straightforward stuff here. We got the GMMK TKL paired with a G502 Hero, but for the cables, I would have grouped them up together so that it looks like only one cable is going across the desk instead of two. Other than that, there's an Astro 840 headset hanging from the desk and some Star Wars Legos in the corner for a bit of decor. I'm sure this entire room is a Star Wars fanboy's dream right now. I mean, this dude's got a giant stormtrooper next to his setup and an entire Star Wars themed wallpaper on the opposite side. I'm pretty sure I'm doing this entire room a massive disservice by not pointing out some of the Easter eggs uh, that a normal Star Wars fan would have noticed. If you guys see anything that I should have mentioned in the comment section, please educate me and let me know in the comments below. While all of the Star Wars collectibles are enough to make a grown man cry, the wall-mounted PC is what really got my attention. It's been a fat minute since I've seen such an epic custom system. Not only is the case custom made with some wood pieces and rustic pipes, but it's got layers. The entire middle section protrudes out, giving it a three-dimensional look. Not only does this make it exceptionally harder to do a custom hardline build, but the chrome tubes on top of that. That's impressive. I gotta give credit where credit is due. This beast is packing the Ryzen 9 7900X with an RTX 4080, but it's got four separate distro plates two radiators that are thicker than Queen Latifah, and a custom 8-inch display showing off his hardware info. And to top it all off, no cables in sight because he ran them through the wall and out from behind the monitors. Bravo, bra freaking vo, Michael, on this epic man cave that you've created. You know what, here, here, just, just take it. Take the 63rd seal of approval. 
Uh, I will hand deliver this to you by in person if I have to, okay? Hit me up on Discord to claim your plaque and your free text or mouse pad. Thank you for sharing this awesome man cave with us. And with that, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite. Thank you guys for watching. As always, leave a like if you guys are enjoying Setup Wars. And I will see you very soon in the next one.